Hey, welcome back to RimWorld Science. Now, last time we looked at thermodynamics, the way that heat transfers between walls, and we learned a few things there, and people were asking for a bit more information about how this applies, for instance, to freezers and coolers. And that is what we're going to look at in more depth today. Now, as a quick recap, one thing that we learned is because of the way that temperature kind of moves through walls, the best freezers are going to be square, they're going to have double walls, and they're going to be underground because heat can't get through the roofs. But now we want to look at some more detail, and we're going to start by looking at how coolers themselves work, how the air conditioning units work. Now, the first thing to note is that, as you see right here, it doesn't matter where in your room you put the coolers. You've got three different rooms here where the coolers are all in different kinds of places. Here they're all kind of bunched up. Here they're across. Here they're kind of in there. And I have them all set to the maximum, you know, so they're always, always running at full power. And if you look, minus 27, minus 28, minus 28. And as we kind of go over, now it's, you know, minus 26, 26, 27. So they fluctuate a little bit, but they're all well within just a degree of each other. This also applies to vents. So here we have two rooms with a cooler in each of them. Uh, they're both down between four and five degrees Celsius. Same deal. They're set to all the way down. Uh, but one of them is real close to this vent and one of them is real far away. But in both cases, the vents, the vented rooms are exactly the same at seven degrees. But although the cooler position doesn't matter, something else does. Every cooler will vent. That's the little red side you see uh, poking out. And it'll push heat to the outside of the vent. Now, if it's like this where it goes to the outdoors, nothing we can do will change the outdoor temperature on its own. But if it goes into a room like it does right here, if this room gets too hot, then it can't get enough kind of cooling power. And you see these rooms are all at minus, you know, 28, 29. This one is at 17 because even though it's got two coolers all the way down, it gets so hot in the room behind them, it just can't keep up. Now notice one thing, we might try to just uh, destroy the roof over these, but unfortunately it's still gonna stay really hot in here because these little tiny rooms of size one are just bugged. Uh, they don't cool down even when they're unroofed the way you'd expect them to. So instead, if you just come and destroy this wall, now these go all the way to the outdoors, so if we give us a little bit of time, this is gonna, yeah, quickly get down to around the kind of temperatures these ones are at as well. Now, the next thing we wanna do is look to see exactly how much cooling power you can get out of each cooler. Since we know that square double-walled uh, cooler, cooler rooms are the best, I'll just test those. That means that we're only having uh, rooms where the number is a square and we go from here all the way up to this uh, you know this one by one room here all the way up to this 18 by 18 room here the biggest we can make it without uh, having a hole in the ceiling and what I've got here is in each one of these rooms I've got a cooler that's set down to 270 degrees and so what we'll do is we'll run th run this for 24 hours and then we'll do another one on a cold snap and another one on a, like a heat wave and see how each of them do. Okay, so you can see the results here at uh, 31 degrees, 48 degrees, and 4 degrees. And it's not obvious to see like any patterns of looking at it, but if you look instead at this graph, you can see it's a pretty like straightforward arc each time where there's just kind of a, a dip uh, for, you know, between the hottest, the middle, and the cold, that's about the same as the dip in the temperatures. And I think that is approximately right. It's not exactly perfect because some of the way that the rooms will heat up more aggressively, depending on how, you know, how big the difference is, makes a little bit of a difference. But basically, you can think of each cooler as just having like a set amount that it will, a set number of degrees, it'll lower the room for that room size. So for instance, a single cooler in a size one room will lower the temperature by about 110 degrees and a size two or size four room square, about 96, 97 degrees, it'll get lowered and so on and so forth. Now, the next question, of course, is to ask how adding more coolers to a room works. It's just double the amount that goes down. So we'll try this with two coolers, three coolers and four coolers. It'll do the same thing. 
Just set them all down to minus 270, run them for 24 hours, and see how they look the next day. Now, what I've done here is simply uh, chart out the how much cooler the room is for each of these than how much the outdoors is. Because when I test it, the outdoors might have be a different temperature. So instead of the absolute values, this is the difference we're looking at. Now, as you can see, as you went from one cooler to two coolers to three to four, the amount of like extra cooling power that we got kept kind of dropping. As you also see, like the closer, the smaller the room was, the more those extra coolers didn't do any good. In fact, actually, uh, the smallest uh, ones, having the extra coolers actually made it worse. I think that's because every cooler that you add is one fewer double wall. And in a very small room, the value of an additional cooler is just swamped by like having or quartering the number of double walls that you have. So now that we have a kind of idea about how the coolers work, we might want to ask ourselves, is there a way to like game or otherwise abuse this system? Now, the first thing you might think is because as the room gets bigger, the kind of number of degrees that a cooler can push down goes lower. Maybe we do better by having some small freezers with instead of one big freezer, like maybe say maybe three coolers across three different freezers would do better than three coolers in one freezer. But it turns out that doesn't work so well. So here I have one, this is a seven by seven room. So this is 49 squares. This is three four by fours, so it's 48. So they're really close in size. And I've got you know three coolers all set to minus 270 running on this one room versus uh, three here each in a separate room. And it turns out this is at minus 45 and these are actually you know, minus 41, minus 40, you know, they're bouncing around a bit, 43, just right about the same. These ones also minus 43 uh, to minus 45. So we do, you know, this is actually slightly cooler than this. So there are some other things you might try too to exploit the fact that coolers can cool a small room down a lot more aggressively than a big room. So in earlier alphas, there was this trick right here where you could put a cooler feed it into just a one by one room and then vent it to a bigger room. And you get a lot more cooling power than just putting the cooler straight in. But that's been fixed or broken if depending on your point of view in alpha 16. So here we've got, you know, these three all set to minus 270 going into a single room with a free air locked freezer. Here we've got three just kind of going straight in. This is like at minus 10, minus 11. This is only at one degree. This is much, much colder. Now, you might also wonder if you can do a similar trick like here, three of these cooling a much smaller room and then venting it into a bigger one. But again, it's not doing nearly as well. This again is minus 11, this here is minus six, and this is at minus three. Now, another thing we might try relies on some of the weird behavior that we pointed out last time about how double walls that are like indoors, it treats what's on the other side as though it was outside. And so sometimes if you're have a cooler thing on the other side of your freezer, it looks like it might be more sensible to have a single wall between that instead of the double wall, which will go to the outside. So to kind of test this thought, I've got these two different setups. Here we've got um, some coolers that are each just set to 21 degrees. And the idea is these would be like the bedrooms or something that these are feeding into. And then three coolers into a big room that is like a cooler. And it's double walled here, same size as here, but here it's only single walled where it borders with the, you know, the, the so-called bedrooms. And we've double walled the outside to see how it goes. And now if we look at this, this is at minus 12 and this is at minus 11. So this one is actually a little bit cooler. We're not actually getting more cooling power by having the single walls over here. But there is something kind of strange you'll notice is here, these 21 degree coolers, they are running hot. They are running really high to keep these bedrooms at 22 degrees. These ones here, they're not running at all and they're keeping this at 16 degrees. And that suggests a kind of trick like this one. So here we've got another freezer, same size as this one, but it's surrounded by these rooms that all vent into each other. Another, you know, three feeding in, just like it was over here. Over here, we've got it at minus 10. Over here, it's also at minus 10. And if we let it go for a little bit, sometimes this will get slightly warmer, but they stay really, really close. But notice all of these rooms are not uh, cooled at all 
but they're all set at 10 degrees Celsius. So the cooling in here is like leaking into these rooms and keeping them cool while not really losing anything here. Whereas here, it's just leaking outside and they're not getting any benefit from it. So although we can't make our freezers more efficient, if we're like in a really hot biome, we want to keep our bedrooms nice and cool or our work rooms, a design like this, where we use kind of the ambient coolness of the freezer to leak into the rooms outside can be very efficient. So unfortunately, all that's mostly negative. There's not a lot of ways to game the system or use the information we've got to improve our freezers beyond just making them square, although we can use that ambient coolness to help other rooms bordering our freezer. Now let's finish up by looking at airlocks. So it's often explained that if you've got a nice cool room, and here's one, but these are all at minus 270, in order to keep it cool when you have people going in and out, you want to have this kind of double door airlock set up. Now, some things I've been wondering for a while. One is just how much coolness do you actually get? So here's a single door, here's a double door. How much am I gonna save if these guys are going back and forth? Second question, since so we know that heat does escape through corners, do we need to have corners here on the doors or not, or is that gonna be different? And finally, what kind of doors do we need? So here I've got, these are all wood. I've got wood, steel, and sandstone. And here I've got, Auto doors, wood, steel, and sandstone. Now all the stone doors the same speed. Now all of these people here are the exact same walking speed of 4.58 uh, cells per, per second. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have each of these guys go in and out 10 times. Each of these is just set to minus 270. There's no coolers. So we'll just see like which one takes on the most heat and which one stays the coolest to see which of these setups is most efficient. Okay, that's 10 runs. Let's see how this did. Let's start with the top row of wooden doors. Uh, minus 113 for our kind of control. Minus 103 for the single door. Minus 109, this will be cooler for the double door with the kind of lip here. And uh, minus 108, one degree warmer over 10 back and forth here. So it looks like having these lips does make a little tiny bit of difference, but not huge, but it does make a difference. Now for the different door types, uh, we have minus 109 here for the wood door, minus 109 here for the steel door, and minus 108, again, it's a one degree difference, but a little bit warmer here for the uh, sandstone doors. And that actually makes sense because the uh, opening and closing speed of the sandstone door is considerably slower. In fact, we how let these guys have a race and you can just see it in action here. You can see, yeah, she's already there. And so these doors spend a little bit more time open and so there's a little bit more uh, heat lock, or you know, heat sneaking in during that. Now, how about over here? We've got ni minus 94 here uh, and minus 94 for the uh, wooden and the steel auto doors, but minus 97, so a little bit actually uh, cooler here for the uh, for the Sanso auto door. And notice uh, that's even a little bit cooler than these ones over here. Uh, things went up because of a few minutes, you know, when they were moving, there was heat sneaking in from the sides too. So that seems surprising that these are actually reversed, that the sandstone auto door is actually the best of all the different types of doors. Uh, but we can actually see why, again, if we watch these guys in action here. So notice that is so fast that for a moment there, both doors are open at the same time. And that means that, you know, heat can be coming in really fast through both doors, whereas these are a little slower. And so like this one, they won't have them both open at the same time like that. So surprisingly, it turns out that stone auto doors are the most effective type of doors to use for your airlocks. But that's going to be it for RimWorld Science today. Unfortunately, a lot of what we learned was negative. We learned that it's much harder to kind of game the system using what we've learned about how thermodynamics works in RimWorld than we thought, although we can use the coolness of a freezer to cool up rooms around it by putting single walls between it. And we also learned here that when it comes to airlock, the stone auto doors are the most efficient thing to do. So when you build your freezers, make them square, put them underground, put some rooms around it that you want to keep cold and then double wall the whole complex and use these stone auto doors for the most efficient freezer that you can. 
Unfortunately, it looks like if your freezer is so big you're having a hard time keeping it cold, there's going to be no substitute for just building more coolers. Let me know if we've missed some trick that we should have looked at, and let me know what else we should do science on in RimWorld. Until then, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon.